Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. All the LSU fans can now relax. Jay Johnson got a coach from the South. The world can go back to spinning. But in all seriousness, Dan Fitzgerald from Dallas Baptist is a really damn impressive hire. I mean, like, damn impressive. The guy recruited 11 draft picks and 14 All-Americans at a college campus that is smaller than half the local high schools around Dallas that also requires players to have Bible study. Now he has to recruit to a campus in Baton Rouge that requires its players to go to Tigerland. Easier to recruit? Perhaps. Culture shock? Eh, a little bit. But Fitzgerald is going to be LSU's recruiting coordinator. But to me, everyone keeps asking, who's going to be LSU's hitting coach? I don't know. But let me ask you this. Who is Lincoln Riley's offensive coordinator? Who is Jimbo Fisher's offensive coordinator? Do you know that? Do you know who Lane Kiffin's offensive coordinator is? You don't, do you? You have the best hitting coach in the country in Jay Johnson. All right? I don't really know if you look at the stats. I don't really know if that's debatable. So... I don't want to say it doesn't matter who his hitting coach will be, but does it really matter? I'll leave that open up to you, because I don't think it does. But what is more interesting to me are, are the two transfers that LSU got. Pitcher Eric uh, Rizelman, who's the one I'm most excited for, and Tyler McManus. He's a catcher from Samford. He batted 366 against SEC teams. Now, as we all know... Stats are for losers, so some context is involved. He had 30 at-bats against these SEC teams. Weekend series against Florida. Not bad. A weekend series against Texas A&M. Okay. Midweek game against Mississippi State. And two midweek games against Alabama and two against Auburn. But then a regional opening game against Mississippi State. All right, not bad, not bad, not bad. He can hit, sure. But here's the thing. This is a classic case like it is with Jacob Berry. He can't really defend. He's considered somewhat of a liability. Either way, this tells me that Jay Johnson is willing to sacrifice Malazzo's defense for a better bat. Okay, Malazzo, I think, was 127 in SEC play. (laughs) That's just not going to cut it. I'm sorry. Just cut through the bullshit. That ain't going to cut it. But a question that I thought was interesting, this is what RP3 asked me during a commercial break today on our show, is he said, well, what about, what are, what do you think all the LSU players are going to say to uh, all these transfers? In other words, are they going to be down with all of the, all of these transfers from Jay Johnson's Arizona and Jason Kelly's Arizona State, all these previous schools coming in? and taking the job of their teammates who have been there at LSU for two to three to four seasons? Is that going to be a problem? And my answer to that is, no, it won't be a problem. Because this goes into a larger question about the culture of sports. And that specifically applies to Dare Rosenthal, who recently transferred to Kentucky. Okay, so I want to make something clear before I go any further. I get the, you need to teach life lessons through sports, And uh, how is the team going to react to Dare Rosenthal getting special treatment? How is that going to happen? Well, we didn't play college sports. I can't tell you how many former LSU football players that I've talked to and former, you know, college players in general that have said, look, people and especially fans don't seem to understand is that your relationship with your college coaches is not like your relationship with your high school and middle school coaches. It's more business-like. Okay, it's it's there's there's a more professional wall there the further up the line you get, even in college. And the reason why we don't understand that, myself included, is because we most of us didn't play sports past high school or even past middle school. So we embrace the oh, take one for the team and, you know, uh, teach the kid the life lessons of sports and, uh, you know, be the father figure. And sometimes you got to do things uh, that that makes the team uncomfortable. Yeah, but. The problem is, is that how many coaches get fired for not doing that kind of stuff? And how many coaches get fired because they just didn't win and they didn't have enough good players? And what's even more so is that the modern athletes today are more cynical. 
because we have to teach you about life and stuff through sports. Eh, it's getting it's getting a little old. It's it's getting a little cliche. Now I look. I want to make something very clear. I agree that sports can teach kids life lessons. I do. I, I am, do not misunderstand me. But at the same time, when you get to the college level, you get fired for not winning enough games. That's it. Okay. Because most players on LSU's team, from what I've heard, they think Dare Rosenthal should still be on the team. And they think the rule is bullshit. Why? Because Coach O models himself after two people. Okay? Jimmy Johnson and Pete Carroll. Jimmy Johnson would always say at his time at the University of Miami, and even in the NFL, he would say, I treat every player the same. I treat them to what they are valued to us for winning. What is their value? And I treat them equal to their value. So if the third string running back gets caught sleeping in a team meeting, I kick his ass off the team. If Troy Aikman gets caught in a, uh, sleeping in a team meeting, I just make him stand up in the back or make him run a lap or some crap. Because if you kick Troy Aikman off the team, then guess what? The rest of the team gets pissed that you blew their chances at winning a Super Bowl. That's how you lose a team. The old school mentality, I don't want to say it's dying because it still, still has value, it's just simply because there has never been more money in sports, and especially in college sports. And players have never been more informed of the business of sports than they are now. Why? Because of the internet. So they know about the realistic business of sports. It's not a culture shock to them when they go pro and they have to learn about all this stuff. I can't tell you how many you know interviews I've seen of former players in the 80s that played in college and that were just totally shocked when their coach left for another school or they went to the NFL and they realized, oh my gosh, this is I'm starting to learn things. Well, kids kind of know that by the time they're in high school. It's just a matter of information. It's not that athletes and coaches have all become soft, although I'm not opposed to that argument. It's that players and coaches have become more realistic, or if you want to call it cynical. Because of the nature of the beast. And when it comes to Milazzo, you know, potentially losing his job to Tyler McManus, the transfer, his teammates are going to be like, dude, you're my bro, and I love you, and I hope you stay on the team, but we, we got to win. You know, we're here, we're here to win, man, and I want to win. And when it comes to Coach O and even Scott Woodward trying to keep Dare Rosenthal on the team because uh, not everybody is down with this archaic, dumb rule, which, by the way, the, the rule... Smoking weed, no smoking weed at LSU. That's not a team rule set by Coach O. That's a university rule, but I digress. It's not about all that stuff. It's not about teaching Dare Rosenthal a life lesson, okay? It's just about, hey, we want Dare Rosenthal back, and Dare Rosenthal wants to stay because he helps with the depth on our offensive line. That's it. That's really just what it comes down to. And the rest of the team knows that. And that's why they want him back, too. It's just that simple. I think we're just overcomplicating it. And yes, I saw the tweet with Sadiq Charles basically negatively recruiting against his alma mater, LSU. This is the shit that it's come to, which hopefully gets this, you know, the university off its ass and gets down the road and starts doing some work to change this damn rule. Hopefully, the new president, William Tate, if he wants to win everyone over, now's his chance. Change the weed rule. But has sports gotten more cynical? Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's like that all the time. Look, at the end of the day, all championship teams have one thing in common. At the end of the year, they have great camaraderie and team chemistry, and they say that they love each other. So that hasn't gone away. I would just say sports is now more realistic. Or, as I would like to say, cut through the bullshit. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.